Hey everyone, I'm Allison. I'm Bryce, and, and we're, we're Better, Better Half, Half Reviews. And today we're talking about Overbox, a boss monster adventure. This game is designed by Aaron Mesburn and Kevin Russ, and the art is by all these lovely people, and it's published by Brotherwise Games. So just a quick side note, Brotherwise Games did send us this for a review. However, our opinions are our own. In Overboss, your objective is to create the deadliest overworld in Arcadia. If you do, you become the Overboss. All right, so let's check it out. Before you start your game, you need to decide if you're going to play on the short side or the long side of the player board. For your first game, they recommend the short side. On your turn, you start by drafting a tile and a token. You take the tile and token that are next to each other. Once I choose my tile and token, I'll first place the tile anywhere I want to on the board. And each tile has different abilities, which we'll talk about later, so you might want to place it in different spots. The next, you'll place your token. In this case, I have a monster token, and so I can place it any, on any tile that I have on my board. I only have one tile, so I'll place my monster on that tile. At the end of my turn, you draw out a new tile, and a new token, and play passes to the next player. So say it's my turn again, and say I choose this tile. This is a dungeon tile. I can place it anywhere I want. However, dungeon tiles cannot have tokens on it. So this monster has to go to another available tile. I don't have any on my board, so he'll go here in my player board. On my next turn, if I choose this tile and this token, I can place the tile anywhere I want to, and then I can choose which token I place on top of this tile. Say I wanted to play this token I saved from earlier, instead of the one I just drew. Some tokens, like portals and crystals, will never be placed on tiles, so they'll just go straight into your layer when you gather them. Crystals give you extra points at the end of the game based on the tile type they're associated with, and portals allow you to switch two tokens on your board. So once per turn, if I have an available portal tile, I can use it. When I use my portal tile, I can do one of four things with it. I can move one token to an open terrain tile. So for example, here to here, say if I had an extra tile here, I could move two tokens to open terrain tiles. So I can go here to here. I could move one monster to an open terrain tile and move another monster to where that first monster was or switch the position of two monsters. Note that this is only monsters or tokens moving. It's not the underlying tiles. The tiles will always stay where they are. Also, if you had minions on your player area, portals do not affect minions there. So you can't move minions from your player area onto the board. There's two reasons why you might want to move your tokens around the board. The first is that if you match your token monster to the underlying tile, you get a bonus at the end of the game. Also, you can score points based on the number of matching monster tokens you have in a row. Play continues until everyone has filled up the board and the game is over. Now it's time to calculate your score and see who is the overboss. There's a score pad included in the game to keep track of all your different scores. It makes it a little bit easier. So the different terrain tiles have different scoring conditions. For example, the graveyard here gives five points to the player with the most graveyards in their, or on their board, and two points to the player with the second most graveyards on their board. The forest locations, you get more points the more you have on your board. So I have two of them on my board, I would get Three points. For the swamp, it has a base point of one, but then you get an additional point if it's connected to another swamp and if it's connected to water. So here it's connected to just water and it's not connected to another swamp. So it would be two points instead of a total of three possible points. This swamp is not connected to water or another swamp, so it's not worth any extra points, but it does get the base point of one. So the camps are similar to the forest. The more that you have, the higher up points that you get but they have different colored flags and it has the not equal sign. So you want to get each different type of flag. So I have blue, black, and orange. I would get nine points. If we switch it out, I had two black and an orange instead, then I would only get four points for two different unique flag types. The cave tiles have a base point of one and then they'll score two extra points if they're near a mountain tile, which are these spaces on the edge of the board. So this isn't near a mountain, so it only scores one point. And finally, there are the dungeon tiles, and you get a base point of one plus one point for every terrain tile connected to it that is different. So here it would be one, two, three, four, and five. Note, however, that this dungeon 
is surrounded by two camps, a graveyard and water. This dungeon would only score four points, which is the base point, one, two, and three. It would not score the extra point because this is a duplicate terrain type. Next, we're gonna count points for the tokens on the tiles. First, we'll count mini bosses. So here we have one mini boss, and he's gonna simply be worth two points. And then if you have any crystals on your board, you go ahead and count that up. So this crystal says I get one point for every camp on my board. I would get one, two, three. Next, so we're gonna look for monsters that match their tile. Here we have orcs that match their camps. So this would be one, two. We have a dragon that matches the cave. We have this skeleton that matches the graveyard. And we have this witch that matches the swamp. So we'd get one, two, three, four, five points for having matching tiles and tokens. Next up, you're going to calculate bands, which are the same type of monsters all in a row. And they can be up and down or left and right. So here I have three dragons in a row worth five points and two dragons in a row here worth two points. And then orcs, two in a row worth two. My witches are not in a row and neither is my skeleton and the mini bosses we've already calculated. Mini bosses aren't counted when you're looking at bands. So even if I had mini bosses in a row, it wouldn't be counted. You've calculated everything up, and now whoever has the highest total is the overboss. If you want a little bit more variety, there are some other tiles here available with other unique abilities. There are various boss cards you could add to the game. You'll deal two to each player, and then each player will choose one. And then these provide you with a special ability that you can use once per game, and a special scoring condition. And finally, something else you can add into your game are these command cards and they allow for a little bit more of take that and switching things up on the board. So if you get a certain type of orientation with tiles, you can use these command cards to move tiles either on your board or someone else's. The game also comes with a quick start guide. And when you're done with the game, you can sort everything nicely into the game trays. All right, so that's how you play the game. Let's talk about how we feel about it. Bryce, what are some of the pros? I like all the little doodads this game comes with. We can play like short games, we could play longer games, we can make it more complex, less complex, we could add the bosses, which add another layer. There's just so much you can do with it. Mm -hmm. It does scale well for like more family friendly, up to a little bit more like gamer or take that. So yeah, I like that there are different ways that you can play this game, definitely. And, and if you don't like the take that, you can leave that out. If you want the take that, you can put it in. Mm -hmm. If you want some asymmetrical player powers, if you don't want them, it's all kind of modular, and I like that about this game. That's true. Um, and I also like that all the different tiles, like you have the separate terrain tile types, but within the terrain tiles, like of one certain type, they're all slightly different. So they have like little different pictures or a different setup. And so like that's something that I thought was like a really cool thing that they added. They could have just easily you know, made them all the same. But I like that they're all unique, so sometimes when I'm drawing it out, I'm like, ooh, look, this one has fairies, or whatever. It's just really cool. <laughs> or the little, maybe Star wars E type references yeah. in some of the tiles. The earthworm thingy, yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> I like that they had like the little details where it's like they didn't have to, but they did it anyway, and it just makes the game look more appealing too. And speaking of appealing, like the artwork, what do you think about like the little 8-bit artwork? I would say it's more like 16-bit. Whatever. <laughs> no, I just, I like the old video gamey type feel of it. It's mm -hmm. really cool. I will admit that a long time ago when I first saw a box, a box for Boss Monster, I was like, what is this game? And just kind of like passed on it. But um, it's converted me over. I love it. And I mean, I love the old school video game type feel. So it's good. When I saw the original bo box monster, I was like, ooh, that looks interesting. I don't know, could be like nostalgic, but we just never tried it, mm -hmm. so. But I feel like this is a good entry point, um, not knowing anything about the box monster universe. I enjoyed this quite a bit. And something else that I like about this is the game trays. Mm -hmm. It really helps the setup and takedown be a lot easier, where, you know, when you have tile laying games, if everything isn't sorted nicely, it can take forever to set it up, but this doesn't take that long. You just like grab your tiles for what you want, grab the little tiles, dump them in a bag, and you're ready to go. So sorting through everything like after the game <laughs> does take a little bit of time, but... Well, that kind of leads to kind of my biggest con about this game, is that if you want to play multiple games, 
Which you, you usually do. You either play with the same set of tiles, or you spend all the time sorting through everything, putting it away, getting the new tiles, reshuffling. Uh, I just wish it was a little easier to set up a new game when you wanted to play multiple games in a row and not have to play with the same tiles. If you're playing with the same tiles, it's easy. You mm -hmm. just shuffle them all up again and you just go. But if you want to switch something out, then you're just sorting through everything so you could substitute one new thing in or whatever. Yeah, the curse of tile laying games. <laughs> but it, it's honestly not too bad compared to other tile laying games that I've had. So, But yeah, that, that is one con. Um, and then something to keep in mind is since it is tile games and there's a bag and you're shuffling things and shuffling the big tiles, you do want to be mindful of wear and tear. So they, they are big and they're heavy duty, which is good because you need them to be durable. But if you're not careful with them, they could get scuffed up a little bit. So if you have little hands that are playing the game, just be mindful of that. Speaking of little hands, um, the bag in this game, I think is fine. I have pretty big hands. And I can reach in there just fine and pick out new tiles and stuff, so. Yeah, I had no problem. It's a good size bag. So shifting back over to the pros, I thought that the rule book was really well laid out with, like, you know, big bold words and numbers. And since it is kind of more of like a family-ish game, um, they had a lot of like little fun side banter with some of the monsters or the overbosses in the rule book. So it was just like engaging and fun right from the get-go. Like, like when Bryce was giving our overview, Part of it, he said, the who gets to be the first player, and it's whoever, what was it again? Whoever raised an army of the undead or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> gets to go first. So it's just like, they don't take them so seriously, and it's just fun, and I love that about this game. Yeah, and speaking of just good rule books, they also have this good like quick start guide player aid. Honestly, this probably could have been the whole rule book. Um, it's really well laid out. It tells you everything about the tiles. It tells you how to play a turn. It tells you how to score. This is awesome. Yes, very helpful. So yeah, I think this game is very well thought out. They made sure it was family friendly, but also scales well up for those gamers. Um, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. And this is coming from someone who, when I first saw like Boss Monster was a skeptic. Now I'm like, can I maybe look into the other Boss Monster games? Because Overboss was just that much fun. And um, to give you an example, it's kind of similar to Sushi Go Party in a way of like how you're collecting things and different combos are helpful. I like Overboss more than Sushi Go. Mm, interesting. It was time for a change, and that's Overboss for me. Interesting. I do like Overboss, and it, it, it provides a lot of interesting kind of strategy or thoughts of like, okay, should I pick up that tile? Or can I wait for that one And because I want the token for this other tile? Is it going to be there? And I could see we've only played this two player. And so when there's four tiles laid out, you can kind of guess like, okay, based on what they're doing, they're not going to pick up that one. He analyzes everything. Everything. But I could see in like a three or four player game, those tiles are going to rotate a lot more. And I can see that being a lot really interesting too. So I think this would scale well as well. But it, it does provide a lot of interesting choices of like, okay, I can put this here, score the max on those points, but I have to take this token, and I'm like, ah, maybe I don't want that token. Yeah, so the thing I like, it's not just like with Sushi Go, you're just taking and collecting cards. There's the tiles and the tokens and moving and shifting things, so it's just there's a lot more going on, and I really like that coming from the gamer side of things. Yeah. All right, so those are our thoughts about Overboss. You should definitely check it out. We quite enjoyed it. It's great for families and gamers alike, and it's coming to retail very soon. So if you want to become an Overboss, be sure to like and subscribe. And also, check out our great merch. Link in the description. There's like 80-something different things you can get with the Better Half Reviews logo. You it's awesome. You can even get a mini skirt. I don't recommend it, though. I think I'd look good in one. <laughs> but anyway, if you do get some Better Half Reviews merch, definitely tag us and let us know because we will share it on our Instagram. So this has been Better Half Reviews. I'm Bryce. I'm Allison. Happy gaming. Have fun. Nope. 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 Yep. Yep. Okay. Nope. 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 Yep. 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 Like the little thing from Sesame Street. Yep. 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 yep, yep. So if you want to be your own overboss, be sure to like and subscribe. Subscribe, Eva. Your own overboss. Do what we tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
you get a mini skirt. <laughs> <laughs>